In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a plugin called Float Term. So as always, you'll be able to find all of the commands that I run in this video, along with all of the configuration over on my blog. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll also leave a link in the description to my NeoVim config that I've been working on. Uh, you can fork it or you can take some of the config if you're interested. All right, so installing. So to install, this is the syntax for Vimplug, but you can use any plugin manager you like. Uh, creating a config file, if you're familiar with all of the other videos in this series, what I typically do is create a config file, add this config, all this right here, into that config file, and then just source it in my init.vim. Um, but before we go into a lot of the config, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a file and we'll take a look at what we get with uh, float term. So if you remember from the last video, I installed something called which key and which key just shows me what all of my leader bindings are mapped to so I don't forget them. So I mapped one to a uh, terminal here. So you see T is for terminal. All right, and here are some programs that we can kind of run inside of Vim now. Now a simple one is just to toggle the terminal. So we'll press T to toggle the terminal and then we can just get out of that like this or we could press T, T and escape and then space T, T and that'll get rid of it. So now we'll do T again and we'll take a look at a few other things that we can do. So we can take a look at this pretty cool um, CLI program called Lazy Git. Uh, Lazy Git is kind of a way to interact with Git but in a terminal user interface kind of way. Uh, so you can go, it's, it really can do a lot and it's actually really powerful. Um, but you can like stage stuff, like just simple stuff, because this really isn't a video about lazy Git. But you could like stage something here. You could press C, type your commit message. Uh, I'm probably not going to commit that, but that's basically it, right? So what we'll do is we'll get out of this. All right, T. And the next thing we'll look at is um, how about FZF? So if you remember from the FZF video, you probably don't need this, but it's something that you could do just kind of as an idea. We can press F for FZF and we can go to, I don't know, maybe the float term uh, .vim uh, file that we created for the configuration. So that's FZF inside of float term. Uh, we can also take a look at, if you're familiar with HTOP, there's this other thing called YTOP, which is just like, I guess, a little prettier version of HTOP. I, I think it does a few other things too, but this is basically that. So I don't know, maybe if you were running some kind of, uh, you know, really long command or something froze, you could open this really fast and check out what's going on. We'll press Q to get out of that. All right, and so another thing we can do is we can have like REPLs inside of here. So we could have a node instance just show up like this and we could type out some JavaScript if we wanted to. Um, actually, what we'll do to get out of this, it's just like that. And then we could take a look at, I don't know, the Python one and I just press space TP for Python. And you know, if you're familiar with the Python REPL, you could just use this. You could do, I don't know, you could just use it for simple math if you felt like it, right? All right, so, and then if we pr do something like exit too, that'll also get us out of here. So as soon as one of those things dies and it's, you know, done, it'll just automatically close with uh, this auto close configuration right here. All right, another one we can look at is one called um, NCDU. So NCDU, I mapped to S for like size. So all NCDU does is it gives you the size of everything in the directory. So like this is the auto load, this is where some of the plugins are. I guess the biggest one is one called Polyglot followed by COC. So you can kind of see like how big of, you know, how big files are in the current directory that you're in. So that could be pretty useful. Um, let's see what else. We went over YTOP, Toggle, and CDU. Uh, we went over Python. We could do something like NNN or Ranger. You're probably already familiar with Ranger because I did a video on that, but here's NNN. So I know some people like that. And you can do it with float term. And let's see what else. Uh, just like Git, we have one for Docker. This is another TUI for Docker, so you can kind of go through all of your Docker stuff. I'm not as familiar with um, uh, lazy Docker as I am with lazy Git, but I know that it's also really powerful and it's kind of just cool to go through all this stuff and just, like, just see the stuff that it gives you. Um, the author for these is actually, he did some pretty good work with that. So, Let's see what else. I think that's mostly it here. Another one that I included was just a very simple terminal, like one that shows up at the bottom when you press semicolon and you can kind of swap between uh, this here and this and then come in here and, you know, I don't know, compile a program or run the program or whatever you want to do, right? 
So that's pretty much it for all the stuff I wanted to show off. And I think the idea really for this video was to show off that you can put anything that you want inside of FloatTerm and have it show up really fast. So your favorite CLI program, just kind of bake it in and then it's just there, right? And you don't have to leave Vim or NeoVim to run that command anymore. So you can toggle them with function keys like I did here, really any key that you want. I think a better way is to just go through and I'm just giving you my which key map from the last video. Um, so this is like where that FCF came from and lazy git and lazy docker and node and NNN. All I'm really doing is I'm just running float term new and then a CLI command. The only one that's really different is the one that goes with a semicolon here and that's just to open up this, uh, this guy right down here. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for this video. So make sure to you know leave a star for this guy uh, over on his repo. I left the link in the description. Uh, if you're interested, you can support me over on Patreon. I'd really appreciate that. And um, yeah, I think that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe.